I be your host and the speaker for today's session. Uh, before we begin, uh, some of the protocols to follow. I will go through this webinar as per the agenda plan. In between, if you have any queries, feel free to post to us on the chat window. We will have a dedicated 20 day slot at the end of this session. Uh, meanwhile, post webinar, if you have any queries or requests, you can post to us on the info at oilsever.com. Let's get into the topic. Uh, myself, uh, Vijayan actually manages maintain practice here at Royal Cyber. And uh, here is a quick agenda of book today's session. I will be briefing about Royal Cyber, who we are, what we do, and what's our offering. As a mainframe practice, what's our strength and capabilities, what are our assets and solutions, and topics for today's discussion, a uh, little elaborate with GitLab, as well as a short demo at the end of the session. And of course, you'll have a Q&A session also need to be discussed. Uh, yes, uh, Royal Cyber is actually a, a first grade uh, IT consulting and digital transformation company specializing in IT services and solutioning. Uh, we are almost 22 years of experience and uh, of almost 2,500 employees across the globe. And uh, we are almost uh, having a global presence. We have with the neighborhood Illinois, and we have a global presence with the uh, UK, U uh, Canada, Mexico, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and Saudi Arabia, South Africa. And we have a biggest uh, offshore delivery center at India. Uh, we are biggest physical presence at uh, Chennai and Bangalore. And of course, we do have uh, Hyderabad, Pune, and Meda as our uh, small offices. And almost we have a 600 plus consultant, certified consultant in various uh, digital transformation tech stack across the globe. And uh, we do have a strategic partnership with the technology leaders like IBM, Microsoft, Google, uh, Amazon, Broadcom, Modern System, Rocket Software, uh, et cetera. And we do have uh, awards and recognitions uh, each and every year uh, with the global uh, leaders. Let's have a brief about mainframe practice overview. As a mainframe practice, we offer our services under these four verticals, like uh, mainframe infrastructure management. Uh, as an infrastructure uh, management, we uh, specialize on all the tech stack, like uh, zero system programming, ZDM system programming, CICS, DB2, and security administration. We cover almost uh, all aspects of infrastructure, uh, provisioning, monitoring, and support. And Z application platform, we, we do have some uh, application support activities and uh, application automations with uh, regs, application performance related engagements, and of course, uh, Zero is Connect. Uh, any kind of an integration with Zero is Connect and API related integrations will uh, will take care. And uh, this is another uh, biggest vertical, which is a modernization, which is a huge uh, tech stack where we support our customers on our latest modernization tool like uh, IDZ, IBM Developer for Z. And uh, we are uh, supporting this uh, modern tools right from the beginning. Uh, uh, when 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 we had a rational developer for Z, we enabled many of our customers with the uh, uh, RD, RDZ. And now this is the latest version called as an IBM developer for Z. And your uh, application analysis tool called ADDI, application discovery and delivery intelligence, and your build tool called DBB and deployment as admin for deploy for Z and uh, Versi as a service with the Z mainframe as a cloud provisioning and Versi as a deploy we can engage with for our customers and your uh, the virtual test platform and your Z containerization extensions uh, under the the stream of Z DevOps uh, we are having a well caliber and capabilities to support our customer engagement. We are supporting on it. And uh, we do have our uh, capacity uh, extended towards ZAAL ops, which is uh, into uh, proactively uh, monitoring your uh, Z environment with the operational log and data analytics related interfaces. 
this is the latest tooling and uh, and uh, understanding your operational activity with Zero normal analytics and of course the Z Linux front areas. Uh, we are taking our extended uh, footprints. And this side, you have some of the logos which we are currently working with or we already supported for these customers. So these are all uh, some of our mainframe logos. Under mainframe practice, we uh, we also come up with some kind of an assets or accelerators or maybe a custom customized application which will support our customers in terms of uh, engaging uh, uh, ourselves into the project. This may help us as a value add, or this may help us as an automation tool, uh, which will reduce the uh, the development effort or engagement effort. So our latest tool is a legacy uh, SEM modernization tool. So this is a customized application which is developed by Royal Cyber, which will uh, extract an application which is defined with a legacy SEM called Endeavor or Changeman to it can migrate to any kind of a latest uh, modern SEM called GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket, or TFS, or maybe Azure DevOps. So this is our latest tool, uh, which uh, is very much required for modernization engagements, and which we are using it uh, with an easy automated way for a customer engagement. And we also have a Z DevOps solution, which will help our enterprise customers to enabling the DevOps CICD implementation with the various combination of a tools of customer's choice. And uh, we had developed uh, a tool called uh, integra integrating your Endeavor with uh, UCD. So uh, actually UCD is an IBM tool with Endeavor is with CA or Broca, which does not have any direct plugin integration with UCD, where uh, Royal Cyber has an application uh, which is a customized application which you can directly integrate with Endeavor to UCD, which means prior to this migration, uh, legacy customers have used uh, UCD as a deployment tool uh, by from Endeavor to direct plugins with our own custom tool to UCD as a deployment. And we also developed some customized code coverage tool which will support our customers on their domain specific needs uh, apart from your default code review to whatever it is going to support. Uh, we do have some kind of a web enabled application which will which does the password reset. And uh, earlier we also migrated some automated migration with the migrating and legacy application to Microfocus Homo. And uh, we also have our own internal Royal Cyber tool Monitor Pro, which was extended to um, uh, Z platform for middleware integration, middleware monitoring tools, the uh, MQ and IAB uh, monitoring can happen, and this can have a, a proactively direct your uh, issues and uh, uh, you have a, a dashboard to handle it more proactively. So there are some of the uh, assessment solutions which will uh, help our customers in our customer engagements, as well as this is going to showcase our capabilities on our uh, mainframe landscape. Now coming back into today's topic and let us deep dive into what is GitLab and how this is going to support uh, CI CD for your mainframe uh, applications or infrastructure. So if you look at mainframes uh, enrollment or mainframe applications to provide CI CD enabling, we have multiple options. Uh, GitLab, which is going to be today's discussion. And apart from that, we do have a Jenkins as a CACD orchestration or GitLab Actions or Azure DevOps. So all of these options can be uh, discussed with uh, customer infrastructure and customer needs. And whichever is the best source we can able to design and take it forward. That's the practice we used to follow. And uh, uh, today's topic is more about GitLab to showcase more uh, future capabilities of GitLab to be discussed, and uh, we will see how GitLab is going to help us on CA, CD, uh, enablement. So for any of these options uh, to uh, go ahead for a CI, CD, it has to be there are some prerequisites or default things we have to take care. Uh, we will have an uh, application defined uh, or committed to your repo repository, and which is your uh, 
SEM account, which is created in any of your uh, modern SEMs, Git, uh, GitLab or GitHub. And uh, you should have a runner. A runner is nothing but your agent, which is connected with your uh, host system, Z system, with the help of a SSH connection. And uh, so that's when it can able to interact with each other or it can able to automatically trigger your uh, the build job. That is automatic build is done with IBM DBB dependency based pen. And uh, as a developer, the modern IDE uh, as a developer choice or the customer choice, you can have IBM developer for Z as a development tool or VS Code editor as a developer IDE or VS Codium or IBM Z open DevOps. So uh, even uh, was a code, uh, any, any, any one of your development environment can be chosen and uh, you can use that as a code editor or code change and uh, we can have these the options can be enabled. So let us see little brief about GitLab. So when you uh, discuss with the mainframe customers, is GitLab is something is a brand new tooling. Uh, they are not uh, exposed to the open system tooling or distributed tooling. And uh, so this is something it's not 100% open or it is uh, this. Uh, it is a mix of both. You have some kind of features which comes as an open systems and uh, something as a paid engagement as well. And uh, GitLab is and predominantly a CM tool as of uh, whatever the most of the people know. It's a version control tool or source control management tool. But apart from that, it also has an extended features which is going to support your DevOps or even DevSecOps options or features. So you can call this as a dev, uh, GitLab as a DevSecOps platform. So where uh, it allows you to enterprise application to maintain and manage their code into as a version controls. And whenever any kind of a change happens, you can able to build the application, uh, bring it from the GitLab interface, and you can deploy and you can able to manage your security for your machine critical application. And apart from that, it also has a capability to uh, plan your uh, activities or tasks or issues across your enterprise uh, in, into this platform. You can have the various roles defined and allocate the task and uh, check for the progress and monitor the progress, uh, which means that it also has the capabilities of zero task, which we can create as assign to the developers and track it and to the uh, to do to the completed state. So these things can be uh, enabled or it has a features to do it. That's when your GitLab has uh, featured as a challenger in 2022 partner magic for rent for enterprise agile planning tools. Uh, when compared to the other tooling in place, this has been uh, referred like this. And uh, that's that's where the capability of uh, GitLab as a DevSub or platform tool. So some of the major components in GitLab uh, is predominantly it's an, uh, uh, it works as a server client architecture. Probably uh, GitLab is a web-based application which has a complete DevOps platform, uh, which we can support the entire organization for your uh, software development lifecycle. Uh, it helps the uh, team to collaboratively work and also it helps to accelerate your DevOps adoption. So meaning, it has a capability or it has an interface which supports the complete project planning, uh, meaning uh, how to define your epics, the entire project in terms of uh, epics, issues and issue board, and tracking the issues and uh, 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 any code you do, how the code need to be staged, version control, and how do we monitor the, the various tasks across the team and how to incorporate the security. So all these things, can be enabled or it has the capabilities. And your Git repository manager has an issue tracking, continuous integration and continuous development support. So in a way, you have your GitLab interface acts, uh, your groups, project, epics, uh, issue, issue board, and of course, merge required and request and CI, CD capabilities, etc. And when it comes to GitLab CI, it helps your DevOps 
best practices to bring in your application development life cycle and your developer whenever and any developer uh, identifies the code change or they incur a, they come across any kind of an code changes assigned to them and they do take up that code change and do that uh, changes and whenever the code change uh, happen and the code change is committed uh, it automatically identifies the change in the code as committed and it tries to triggers the pipeline that automatically build, test and deploy. Now here, what do you mean by pipeline? Pipeline is nothing but a set of a sequential activities or set of sequential jobs or set of sequential steps which need to be performed. So in, in, in mainframe term, so you have some uh, JCLs, which is called execs or steps. So if you, your JCL may have three steps, five steps, so it has to go through the step-by-step -step process based on your written code of the previous step. The same way, this pipeline has the steps. So each step does the sequence of activities, which we will be defining through the script. So this is your pipeline. Uh, and uh, your main objective of your GitLab, uh, basically your GitLab repository, which uh, is app, it comes along with your project and the project is uh, having your CI CD pipeline, whatever the pipeline or the steps or the script that will be uh, stored in your GitLab CI YAML file. So which is actually a part of your repository. So in a way, it is uh, tightly coupled and integrated, and it helps you to automatically trigger your uh, automatic uh, build and pipelines, and etc. So uh, yeah, before I we get into this, let me just have a quick uh, glance about your uh, GitLab. Uh, as a mainframe customers or mainframe uh, users, mainframe developers, so your development environment predominantly into ISPF panel and or maybe uh, uh, the latest tooling is uh, nowadays and, and IBM developer fuzzy when you wanted to go for an, uh, uh, CICD enablement obviously your development environment uh, will be your Eclipse based IDE which is IDZ or maybe your uh, VS code editor something like that. So this is your GitLab, which does the version control. So this is here, it is organized as a form of a uh, projects. The projects can be grouped uh, together into groups. So this is your group. Group contains various projects. And uh, if I go for this project, this project has the repository and the related artifacts. And uh, if this is your uh, project structure. Project has these folders. And this is your uh, uh, gitlab.yaml, I mean, CI YAML file is basically is going to be the placeholder to define your pipeline scripts. And as we discussed, it has a capability to collaboratively uh, work along with a team. You have a uh, web interface with uh, manage with your team members and plan your project activities with epic issues and issue board and track your issues. And your code can be uh, maybe uh, reside in various branches. And you have a repository. Repository contains your branches. From each branch, you will have some code can be checked out. And the developer does code change and commit max. So in a way, uh, it has to have the uh, branching strategy defined in such a way that you will have always your main branch which will be uh, running in your production when any uh, developer does the code change that will be there will be a pull request that will bring you in your development branch and uh, that's the code change and do the commit and when it is uh, moved to your test test is the branching way uh, the, uh, the testing team does the test and post this and it can be moved to your main branch so as of now these are all the three uh, branches and of course uh, the branching uh, definition or strategy and how it need to be what are the rule set uh, it is going to be another separate topic we will be discussing uh, in the sequence of our webinars so now today's topic is CICD we will be we'll be focusing more on that so it also has the commit 
incoming command and the tag. Tag is something is actually a, a little bit more about the specific or uh, uh, details which you can uh, tag along with your history, whatever you are capturing. And uh, it has an easy interface to look into the repository graph and the comparison with the various histories, various versions. Uh, you can compare the various revisions, whatever the code change when compared to your um, when compared to your uh, ISPF related interface and compare. This might be a pretty much simple. You can easily compare uh, or from various branches how it is from the development branch to main branch. You can easily look into the changes. And you can get the comparison between the the two. So between these two, what are the different uh, uh, how you can compare and in case uh, you can able to see what are the differences between both and if you wanted to or some uh, inclusions and some uh, additional lines or some of the deletions happen. So this, this is the how we can compare and in case if you wanted to uh, merge this request, you can able to go for creating a merge request. So when you do so, it is going to trigger your pipeline bill. We will come back this shortly. Yeah. So now having seen how your GitLab is structured, the interfaces, when uh, we have seen at the beginning, we have uh, enabling CI CD has multiple options, but uh, comparing to the other tools, uh, the in the most of the enterprise uh, customers prefer to have a GitLab. Uh, YB, uh, it is supporting the team to collaboratively work, right? So in a way, the team collaborative activities is better performed with this when compared to other two. And when you have other tools like for one for uh, uh, the, uh, maintaining your uh, team management, that is uh, uh, getting into zero and getting into your CI separate, CD separate, and your uh, SCM separate. So handling of multiple tools, purchasing a multiple tool licenses, managing it a bit uh, tedious and costly. So instead, it is all in one. You can easily manage and purchase. Your cost will be less and your maintenance will be easy. And uh, it is actually when you uh, different people work together, tracking with the uh, with the teams or activities with whatever you are assigned against your uh, milestone will be much more easier in this. And here you can assign the task and the task can be mapped to the milestone. Or you can easily easily track. And the same thing when it is completed, we can able to easily uh, merge it. And when you are merging, you can also tag your milestone activity, whatever you have merged. So in a way, it is completely uh, uh, traceability will be maintained very much well when compared to the other infrastructures. And it has an uh, isolation between the teams and transparency between the teams. Isolation meaning isolation when they do code change. And of course, the transparency is also between the teams and making. And of course, the, the time consumed and uh, days elapsed, it, it will better perform when compared to the other one. So it is more productive and less time for an adoption. And it's a better collaborative tool. And hence, uh, most of the customers are predominantly choosing this GitLab when compared to the others. And it also has something called a directed as a click trap. Uh, which is nothing but it is uh, an as a click graph that shows your dependency of your application, whichever you are building. So when you uh, when you uh, when you take uh, mainframe or insurance or banking applications, which will have some kind of a huge dependency, this are a little bit of a complex application will have huge dependencies. Sometimes these legacy applications will have some of the uh, the data in a shared. Uh, uh, LPAS and application will be designing separate. So the multiple applications will be reading the, the dependencies in the shared uh, data sets and things like that. So there will be a huge uh, dependencies and to know, to get these dependency details, the this concepts and uh, helps uh, to easily get and it supports your CI CD uh, automation, right? So this is also will supported in GitLab. And GitLab 
is uh, actually a server client architecture. So GitLab server, it's actually web based application. It's nothing but your server interface, which either runs on uh, Linux, Windows, or Mac OS. And your uh, Z system is in your S, your Z system is in your host system. Uh, you need to have a uh, GitLab runner, which is uh, executed from your uh, Unix system services and connected with your SSS uh, executed. And in a way, the server and the client or host system and GitLab can talk to each other or integrate and you can support for triggering your build and deployment to your mainframe system. So now uh, the entire orchestration, how it can look like. So here is the uh, holistic picture. So the, any application has to go through this phases, analyze, go, uh, versioning, do the version control, build, package, and deploy. So for analysis, you can have the modern tooling called ADDI or uh, WASI analyzer kind of, and your uh, application uh, development tool, IDE, uh, integrated development environment can be of your IDZ, VS Code Editor, or ZV Explorer. And uh, so, which, whichever uh, developer tool you choose, your code can be version controlled or maintained, versioning can be maintained with GitLab. So, there is a Git component which will support to connect uh, your IDZ to GitLab. And Git is something from our rocket software, which helps us to connect this GitLab. And your IDZ comes out with GitLab persp Git perspective, uh, where you have an, a repository clone, repository access, and check in, check out options. You can able to see your GitLab specific details in your developer ID. And uh, that's going to be your version control. And whenever the code change happens and the developer commits it can be identified by your pipeline which is gitlab ci yaml file and which is already scripted with various stages as per our customized requirement and as per that it is going to go through the flow and your build the typical flow is uh, the build test and apply right so the build will get triggered the food for a build your ibm dbb is your build tool ibm dependency based build and uh, the whatever the build happened the packaging various build files can be packaged together uh, with the help of a ucd and can be moved to artifactory for the binary code station and uh, it can be deployed by a ucd open code deploy for z so, and for these, the automated pipeline can be orchestrated with your GitLab CA option, which as we have seen, you have an uh, option to uh, get into your CI CD enabling, enabling your CI CD. It supports your uh, CI CD options, which with which you can able to set it up your pipelines. So for these DevOps, there are some prerequisites just to have a preliminary discussion. I would like to put forth so that we will understand what are the prerequisites uh, to get into this, what are the dependencies, etc. So to connect your IDZ or any other developer environment with the Git uh, specific SEM, you need to have your uh, uh, Git SEM that is Rocket Software's Git, uh, which will support for your uh, connecting uh, your, your uh, I development tool for your dependency based build. And IBM DBB is a toolkit uh, which basically does your uh, dependency based build. It will be installed in your unique system services of your ZOS. And uh, it also has some kind of a sample Z app build, which is nothing but a sample framework, supplied framework, which has some. Uh, default uh, the capabilities or default scripts for your Cobalt, PL bar one or assembler applications to compile and deploy. So that can be taken as a reference and do your own uh, code change with respect to the customer infrastructure. Okay, and your GitLab runner is supposed to be required, which is actually an agent uh, which installed on your Windows server and it can able to connect with your 
a host system with the help of a connection parameters, whatever we are going to define. And of course, we spoke about a uh, developer tool uh, enough, I believe. Yeah, uh, you uh, that has to be again installed. It is also works as a client server architecture, wherein uh, there is as a client IDZ client need to be installed in your window and uh, IDZ host components will be running on your uh, unique system services. So these are all the things or as a software prerequisite you have to have to enable your CI CD with your uh, mainframe application. So as a prerequisite, just a glance, mainframe installables, it is categorized like this. Mainframe installables are your Git client, DVB toolkit, DVB samples, and UCD agent. So these components as an installer, it has to be installed, you know, from the mainframe end. And from the distributed end, you have to have your DBP server, which is running on Linux. And uh, you can, or you have to also have your UCD server, which is running on either Linux or Windows. And your agent will be running on Linux uh, or ZDOS helper. And your GitLab, as of course we have seen, it's a server runner architecture. It can connect it together by a SSH connector executor. Okay. And this is as a prerequisite. We can go ahead and do that. And uh, yeah, so let us see the quick demo mode. Your uh, CI CD enablement with uh, GitLab. So uh, as a GitLab, when you have a uh, login as a developer, you can log in or as a build engineer with reference to role, you have a different aspects. And your GitLab.ci.yaml file is the placeholder for your pipeline. You're focusing here the pipeline. So it also has some web interfaces. And initially, you have some variables uh, defined and initialized, which will be required for your thing. And you have your stages. Uh, there are five stages defined here, right? Uh, these are all the various steps which will be performed sequentially. The first step is uh, preparation. So which it basically creates your workspace which means it creates your uh, development library and build is nothing but it is trying to execute your build uh, command and uh, core review is nothing but it is going to uh, call your core review core rule, I mean core review tool and to check the qual quality and packaging is one which helps you to package your uh, the builds into uh, the auto packages into a file uh, which can be deployed in, with the help of a UCD. And the, the last stage is going to be uh, the deployment. And uh, so if I wanted to go and look into the pipelines, uh, you will get into this uh, left side, go to UI and pipelines, and you are running your pipelines. And if you can see, your pipeline has got five stages. And in each stage is complete, you can see the tick mark and you can able to see your workspace is created. And uh, the next stage is going to be build. You can see the build log. So there are some nine files have been built. And this is your uh, EBB build results. Build results can be viewed from your uh, web application of build. And uh, so here is how you can see the build reports. So for this code change, there are some of the files, uh, seven or eight files, I think it has got compiled. And uh, you can see the code review is the next stage, which is getting triggered. So the pipeline just running. And accordingly, you can see the tick mark. We are also quickly going through this. And this is how the code review log looks like. It basically invokes a JCN to trigger your code review tool. And uh, it also gives you the return code in terms of a JCL return code RC to see whether code quality is completed. And it is completely complete. So it is, you can see your tick mark. And the next goes to your uh, packaging. So when you wanted to package all your build, need to be, uh, these are all the things are built and which need to be combined together as a UCD, which is a bus tool. So bus tool dot uh, SH is the script which will trigger and we have to pass this, all these input uh, as an input to this bus tool, which will uh, 
move into artifactory and it can be deployed with UCD. So UCD uh, deployment is going to be like uh, when it is moved into your artifactory, it will be uh, completed. And for deployment, you have a UCD and the deployment success can be uh, seen through your UCD, uh, UCD web interface. And you have a component, this component, uh, these are all the things are getting deployed. Right, so this is how your things are getting deployed. You can see um, uh, we have seen how. So we just now uh, seen how the CI CD with the help of GitLab is taken play and uh, whatever the features available we have seen in detail. So before we get into this uh, Q&A, I like to have this uh, couple of op offers uh, as a complimentary in in uh, for this webinar participants. So we do have uh, assessment kind of an uh, complimentary assessment. So which means uh, in case if you are looking for uh, any kind of a modernization suggestions or solution, so we can get into a three weeks of uh, free assessment uh, to assess about your infrastructure sizing a system uh, understanding a little bit to some extent uh, with a sample application and see that how this can be um, migrated or modernized and uh, kind of a migration plan approach and timeline. So which we can provide as a complementary. And we also have another option, which is a jumpstart package, uh, which is a very good successful model, which normally used to, for our customers. So it is eight to 12 weeks of engagement uh, we will get into, uh, which means we will uh, get some, pick some uh, pilot uh, of the scope, pilot as a scope, the limited application we can pick and choose and we can try to execute whatever uh, the uh, supposing if it is a modernization engagement so we will try to take a couple of application and we'll go through this modernization uh, journey and we'll show them how this application can look like uh, post eight weeks of post modernization and based on that uh, they can take it up to the next steps so these are all uh, some of the options we can avoid uh, as a complimentary or maybe discounted price. I think, of course, jump demonstrate package is not on free. It's a, it can be avoided as a discounted rate for those who have joined the webinar today. And uh, yeah, let me open up the forum for uh, questions. Do you have any questions? By the way, thank you so much for being with me. And uh, let let me hear out uh, the questions from you. 